With the digital revolution upon us, it's become doubly important with the danger of women being well and truly left behind. Stefania Giannini is the Assistant Director General for Education at the UN's cultural body UNESCO and also advises at the EU on research. In a past life, she was also Italy's Education Minister and joins me in the studio today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for inviting me. Let me start with some basic statistics. Now, according to the UN, some 617 million children cannot read and cannot do basic maths. Also, less than 40% of girls in sub-Saharan Africa are unable or have, uh, do not manage to complete uh, lower secondary school, not to mention 4 million children and teenage refugees at this current point in time who are not in school. I'm curious to know, what can a body like UNESCO do to address these sort of problems? There is an edu educational emergency at global level. It's not like a climate change. Can we, can we, everybody can see and touch, but it's something really, really very urgent and we must speak with one voice. What can we do? How can we address this, uh, this big challenge? UNESCO is doing uh, a comprehensive uh, is, uh, approach to this uh, educational emergency and the gender gap in this framework. I want to mention three different levels of initiatives we are we're running. Starting this year, uh, we're launching this strategy. Uh, and uh, it's about, first of all, better data we need, because we must have a full picture of uh, bottlenecks are still high. You mentioned sub saharan region, and for sure, access to primary school is still an issue there. Uh, but in other countries, in other regions of the world, we have the, the question of quality education for girls who are enrolled in the, in the, in the process. So better data first. Second, better policies, because we must uh, influence, we must advise ministers about the importance of introducing gender responsive initiatives in their legal frameworks and translate them in uh, uh, policies at national and regional level. And the third point is not the last one, I think. It's a question of empowering girls. It's a question of giving to them a message that they can do, they can dare more. Have you come across a country that's got it right? I think that, uh, you know, it's difficult to say that uh, we have a country, champion country, you mean, uh, but for sure there are countries uh, like, uh, you know, the European countries, we can say that in terms of uh, gender equality in, uh, in uh, the primary and secondary school, it's already achieved as, an, as a result. Then we see uh, the south of the world where there is still a problem, not because of policies, but because of also cultural constraints. And this is something that we are working about. Let's just pause there uh, um, for a moment, Stefania, because in the African nation of Malawi, some 9% of girls are married by the time they reach 15. Yet that figure jumps to one in two by the age of 18. Educator Chrissy Chipawa is determined to change that, having dedicated her life to helping girls stay in school. Chrissy Chipewa was only 12 years old when she had to drop out of school to help support her family. A common story in Malawi, where many young girls are forced to work or marry early and to give up on education. Thanks to her family's support, Chipewa later managed to finish her studies. She's now a teacher and helps train other female educators in order to encourage young girls to stay in school. Most of the parents, they don't see the importance of, the, of school to the, to the young girls. They think that when they, whenever the girl has reached maturity, then she can be married so that she can uh, take care of herself. Chipewa's efforts have begun to bear fruit and to inspire a new generation of women educators. Many of her former students have become teachers themselves and are hoping to pass on their love of learning to their own pupils. We created special study groups to encourage girls to stay in school. Having dropped out of school myself, I encourage those who come back not to be frustrated with comments from other students. They have to study hard and become future role models. 
In 2017, Malawi's government earned praise for raising the legal minimum age to get married from 15 to 18 years old. Yet the East African country still has one of the highest child marriage rates in the world. One in two Malawi girls are wedded by the age of 18. Now watching that report with me in the studio, Stefana Giannini, who is the Assistant Director General for Education at the UN's cultural body, UNESCO. Uh, Stefani, we've seen that report, how important it is for girls to have role models. It's crucial. In my view, it's crucial. I think that uh, uh, if girls can see that in the real society, uh, also other women have already achieved some important role of responsibility, uh, of decision-making, of power. It's not a dirty word. We must use power related to the ambition of girls. I think that they can find their aspiration and they can find uh, in, in themselves the, the, you know, the, the energy and the courage to go ahead. The other ticking time bomb, if you like, is the fact that we need to desperately, don't we, boost the number of girls in science and technology subjects. I understand, uh, I've been quoted a figure, that somewhere in the order of 80% of software is written by men. And, and when you have the digital revolution upon us, and obviously now artificial yeah. intelligence, that is not a good statistic. Only 2% of ICT uh, project are uh, patents uh, are generated by women. So this number is quite clear and goes matching with yours. Uh, what can we do? First time uh, is uh, something that uh, starts from the primary school. No, it's not a process that we can concentrate on a, uh, at higher education level where we have only one third of women and girls who are uh, choosing uh, uh, science, technology, engineer, maths faculties. And uh, it's a question of content. It's a question of uh, teachers training once again. That's what we are doing. And uh, it's a question of relaunching in the global debate the importance of science and the importance of being a, a brilliant scientist. Family influence is absolutely important because parents can uh, you know, can uh, orientate no? when you are very, very young. So it's a question of building uh, in the community a sense of empowering girls for STEM. Stefania, thank you for your time. Thank you.